Hello again. Oh, is it back on Twitch? Wow, it is. And the delay is like three seconds. I can hear myself, like make a complete sentence and then hear myself again. Have you ever heard your voice? It is unnerving. I'm going to mute this now. Like everyone's like, no, my voice is pretty cool. And then the first time they record themselves and play it back. They're like, what the hell is this? Is this me? Is this what everyone hears when I speak? Wow, okay, the stream loaded in like three different browsers. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, let's transition back to my desktop. Cool, so everyone can see me now. And I guess we're ready to see what the problem looks like. It, it might be that like the problem is actually super gnarly and I actually don't want to solve it, but we'll we'll see. Let's just, I, I am discovering, so spoilers for Advent of Code, uh, obviously. So if you don't wanna, I don't know, if you wanna solve it yourself first, then go do that. Uh, and then, I don't know, I'll, <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Let me just uh, put on some music. I'm gonna listen. So uh, uh, as I said earlier, there will be no music on the stream. I'm not capturing the desktop audio, but I am listening to Beethoven's uh, Seventh Symphony. There's a very good version of it on YouTube. So if you wanna be sync, uh, we'll all hit play together. Okay, so here's the link. <laughs> that way you can opt into the music. It's better if it's opt in. You can't opt out if it's like in the stream, it's here for that forever. Um, but I'm gonna hit play in three, two, one, go. All right, cool. And I feel like it's it's what we need for this this kind of problem. Cool. So tree top tree house. So I have I have uh, my little folder here with all my solutions. I'm gonna zoom in a little because it's only 1080p, as opposed to the luxurious 4K you get on on my on demand platform and on YouTube if you're a, a YouTube Premium subscriber. Um, so I'm just gonna make day eight. There we go. And then I'm going to add a bunch of things because I like them. So color R is always good. Uh, actually, oh, <laughs> uh, hey, Jay Biasan, am I just starting? I, I am just starting. The day seven solution is already on my website. So spoilers, but if you go to fasterthanlie.me, which is just the fancy way 10 years ago of like having a domain. Uh, you go to series, you go to Advent of Code 2022, and there it is. It's 15 minutes of like struggling with trees and rust. I know you're the annoying guy from Mastodon. I remember every single person's nickname. This, I, I'm not, I'm, it's not that I'm obsessed with social media. It's just that I really like checking out notifications and like meeting, it's like you're meeting people, but you don't have to like, there's no expectations because they don't see you checking them out. So you're just like, oh, this person works at, I don't know, Slack. And you're like, oh, neat. I didn't know they had a director of whatever. And like, that's that's cool. So I, I just do that. And then I just remember the, the, the avatars and the names. And when I see them again, I go, oh, neat. They're still around. That's, that's so cool. I'm so happy for them. Uh, so this is going to be a little more like longer than, I guess, other event of code streams because I'm also going to be writing the article for it. Because I was feeling very lazy, like I didn't want to write the article for this. And I thought, I'm going to just do it on stream. That way I'll force myself to do it. So this is productivity life hack. This stream is not for you, it's for me. It's to force me to actually do it. So first thing I'm going to do is actually fix some things on my website. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to... And I did this on another computer, so I'm just gonna re reinstall my website software real quick. And you'll get to see what it looks like to actually develop my site. Hey, BGT lover, how you doing? Hey, Septum, hey, Antonio, Alejandro. I have no idea how many of you are, because I just <laughs> I just closed the thing. Um, if you wanna like follow or even subscribe to like either YouTube or Twitch, you can do that, but just know that I'm gonna get a lot more money if you subscribe even for five bucks a month on GitHub or Patreon. So like 
do whatever you want. There's really no obligation. This is free anyway. Hey, Ari, how are you doing? Analytics. Okay, I can't see how many of you are there currently, I guess. That's fine. It says 44. That's fine. It's it's a riot. Cool. So yeah, streaming the day of is probably a bad idea, right? All of you <laughs> want it. We can just not do it. We can just like, I don't know. How do I do a, a vote? How about we don't do Advent of Code and we just do HTTP2 stuff instead? Because I've been putting it off forever. And I know like we're so close to getting the, the test pass. Uh, so just for context, I am working on, let me find my windows. I'm working on an HTTP implementation that's on top of uh, IO Uring, and it is here. And I have this pull request where I start implementing HTTP2 and it's very naive and it's not like efficient yet, but it's uh, parsing frames and like almost communicating with curl. And that sounds fun. But I am going to have to do the, the advent of code thing anyway, but I get the point that like people are going to get um, spoiled if I do it now because they haven't had the time to get to it. Because it, for me, it comes out at like 5 a.m. So I'm not doing it at 5 a.m. I should actually do you a straw poll, shouldn't I? So straw poll, this is what streamers do. It's, it's, I'm not doing the streaming thing. Like I'm doing it ironically. Like again, this is just a productivity hack. Now I'm on stream and I have to do something or the numbers will go down. And then my brain is no, don't let the numbers go down. And so like, I have to, I have to do something. I have to, I can't go just take a nap. I just finished my coffee. So we have to get it done. So AOC or HTTP2, single choice. Oh, okay. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Require participants' names. No, what's wrong with you? Cool. So do I just post the link and then you can, yeah. And then I'm in the admin, cool. Yeah, the next stuff is really neat. Uh, I'm going to full screen this. Uh, I have a series about this. This is troll poll in both chats right now. So you can vote for like doing AOC or HTTP2. And I'm going to vote with my heart. Show the results. Cool. Um, I have a series about like building a Rust web service with Nix. I've written five parts. We are almost at the next part where the part it's five parts of like from the very beginning, like setting up the, the Linux VM thingy and then writing a service and then adding telemetry and all that stuff. And then I, I'm at the part where like you build it using Docker so you can deploy it somewhere like fly.io. Um, and it's all done without using Nix. So you can see what it looks like without using Nix. And then we switch to Nix. And the idea is to show you that, like how nice it is actually. So don't look at the flake.next because it's spoilers. So I haven't, I should probably be releasing like one part a week or something, but um, I I feel like if I do this, I'm just going to never finish the series because that, that's going to mean having two series where I do something every day or every week. And like you get the, it's not that serious about upgrading my website. This this one's over. It's about like doing a completely different thing. Because upgrading my website is very fun because my website is full of arcane stuff uh, that I did just for myself. And it's, I, I like it very much. But it's a bit like for others reading this, it's just like, that's cool for you, but I don't get to use it until I get 500 sponsors on like GitHub. I just, I just pointed at the camera that's not active until I get 500 sponsors. And then I'm going to open source it. But you know, <laughs> it's, I'm not on track for this goal at all. 
Uh, but the point is that, yeah, people are, I'm talking about a, a huge proprietary code base that people can't look at. And so it's not immediately useful for them. Whereas this series is like, let's start from scratch and we're going to make a, a fun web service that's actually useful. So the poll is not going great. It's like, it's like US politics all over again. It's very tight. Oh God, why did I say those words? Okay, there's no sen like post sensor button. It's like nothing. It's like a pie that's like kind of shittily divided into. <laughs> and AOC is winning by one vote right now. Oh, it just failed. That's cool. Oh, they have the same priority. I forget how to solve this. Is it Nix? Ah, oh, it's Nix update. All right, but the. It's upgrade. But this weird ass syntax, I swear, like just dot doesn't work. Just star doesn't work. Uh, dot hash doesn't work, but dot star quoted, of course, single quoted because otherwise it would be <laughs> updated. It would be expanded by the shell. Uh, yeah, no, but that makes sense. Like you don't want to install two of the same. So like, this is not great. This is not install. It's not a regex. It's a path expression thingy. I don't, I hate it when people reinvent path expressions. I was like, no, you, this is not actually files. It's just like slash separated. It's Nix, yeah. I feel weird writing about Nix because I don't know much about it. I just got it working once and now <laughs> I like to share that with the world. H2 is winning. I didn't. I didn't set a limit to the poll, so it's just gonna, <laughs> it's just gonna go back and forth. <laughs> I mean, think of it this way. Like, if I go ahead with AOC, I guess half the people leave. Um, so I don't want that. Whereas if I do H two, I I don't think the AOC folks are just gonna be like, no, I'm out of here. I don't like H two B. Um. I guess we can set the skeleton for it. You can see what it looks like when I actually write an article. So now that I've installed it, um, why is the internet somehow? Yeah, that's why. Cool. Uh, so let me just disable this because I don't need this anymore. Oh, I'm gonna have to add secrets. All right. I hope I <laughs> I hope I set up the transitions well enough. All right, back soon. Don't look at my screen. Oh, no, it's good. I, I committed the secrets, in fact, with uh, Git Crypt. So it's fine. Let me transition back. And we are back. And I don't think the secret's on my screen. I don't want to have to rotate. How many times <laughs> have I had to rotate credentials in the middle of a stream going like, please let there be no bad actors on the stream watching this. It's It's super, yeah, I committed the secrets. Yes, in, in, in encrypted at rest, it's what GitCrypt does. You need the key to decode them. <gasps> oh no, he leaked these keys, oh no. Well, you know what? If you get my keys, just help me out, all right? Just improve the website, use your powers for good. I trust you. I trust that I have <laughs> a good natured audience. Uh, cool, so we don't need that anymore. It's heinous, but it, it'll have to do. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. I wanted to show off like, hey, how do you write an article? And the answer is you make a folder. Well, first, no. First of all, you like serve. Serve stuff. And then that serves here. And it opened in Chrome because I didn't change my default browser. And now I get a local copy of my site with like broken videos because um, the, the video server is not running, but I can also run it locally. And then in series, you go here. Oh, what's that? It's a draft series. Oh, whoa. spoilers. Uh, so yeah, I see the drafts locally and there's also your old secret to see them in production, but shh, nobody tell anyone. And then if I just create like part eight here and then just copy paste from part seven because these are annoying to get right. Blah. 
And then I've gotten very good at UTC timestamps because they're two hours behind me. I know you know the country I live in roughly now, which is a big secret. And then you add trap to true. And then you're like, let's tackle. And I'm not actually going to do it because I think the poll is edging towards HTTP2. Yeah. Let's tackle the, the, the eight problem. And then you just copy and paste the thing. Yeah, it's very low tech, but what, what you don't see is that it actually refreshes. So it's already here. Unless my stream doesn't want me to. In which case, we're not gonna. And if I save, it rebuilds it and atomically switches to the new thing and sends like a server sent event to the website and it just reloads. And then when I want to deploy, I just do a secret URL thing that I'm not gonna show you. <laughs> and that has a password. Uh, you can actually, yeah, no. It should be disabled in production, but it isn't. Can you recommend a coverage report generator for Rust? A question from Frau Lemetra. Uh, yes, I can recommend. So a bunch of people use Cargo Tarpaulin, that one, uh, which was the only option until recently, but the one I'm, I'm using is uh, Cargo LLVM Cov, which is newer. I think that like this uh, instrument coverage thing was merged recently into Rust. Let's see, Rust change log. There we go. It's docs, I want an announcement maybe. How to generate Rust 160. Cool, so April of this year. Things go by pretty fast. But yeah, you have that now. So you can just use this, which is better than this one, I think. But yeah, I'm just gonna paste both in chat. How do you write new articles? Do you actually use SQL stuff in a weird template templating language without syntax highlighting? Uh, I don't need to, like it's just Markdown, right? So this is like, this is fine, I can quit this. This is just Markdown, right? Hi, I'm italic and bold and a list who knew and that's it right and it's not reloading because i don't know connection broke sometimes the connection breaks because it's forwarded by uh, vs code and sometimes i don't know it doesn't like me whatever oh no we can't do aoc we have to do http2 fine fine all right pulls over i'm closing it the the, the final tally is 18 votes for HTTP2 and 16 votes for AOC day eight. So we will not be doing AOC. Oh yeah, you, you cannot see that stuff. Sorry, BGT lover. I knew it and I, I still forgot. Uh, yes, it is just marked down. The, 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 the templating stuff, I already went over on my website, but I can day eight draft. Uh, there is templating stuff, there is SQL stuff in the templates, which makes everybody go, oh, what are you doing? It's a day security liability. And it's like, yeah, in the same way that like any user input that you eventually put in, in, in a SQL database is a vulnerability. But I use like variable binding stuff. It's fine. There's no valuable data on there. I promise. Hey, Ben Garyoth. Welcome back. I am streaming again. <laughs> Have you just been waiting around for four years on my page? And it's just like, oh fuck, what's playing audio? Oh, I should stop. Frick. <laughs> Please emojis in chat every time I use a, a, the, the real version of a swear word because it makes the US Puritans platforms very unhappy. Um, cool. I might actually have to pause the music for this because I have to focus up before doing each two. Uh, cool. Oh, there's a situation unfolding in real life. I will be right back. <laughs> but then we're probably doing H2 stuff.
Uh, yeah. I don't know if I can keep streaming. I cannot do much about the real life situation unfolding, but it requires a bit of attention. So this is unfortunate, but I'm, I haven't made a decision yet. This is slightly upsetting. I can sing while you wait. We can do an AMA. This is now an AMA. I will every time I look up and look at the at the chat, I will answer one question or more. It could be a karaoke stream. Uh, yeah, it could be a karaoke stream. That is a very good point. Apparently, people are making awesome things. I'm just gonna tr like transition back to my head while we're at it. Yeah, cool. Uh, apparently, people are making awesome things in Rust. For example, the Linux screen reader is being made with it. I saw that. I saw the like accessibility support for Rust the framework. What was it called? Uh, it's not access kit, but like one of the, I think it was Druid. No, what's the one everybody use? I forget, but yeah, they have a, they have a, they've done a thing and it works on like Windows and Mac and some like soon Linux. Odilia. It's very neat. It's a new screen reader for the Linux. Oh, it's a, so it's that replaces Orca. I have not tried any of these, but I should. Because like I've been trying to be good about alt text with images uh, on Twitter, <laughs> RIP Twitter, and Mastodon, and my website. I've started doing that. But I have not actually tried using a screen reader besides what's what's built into Windows, so I guess I have tried. Uh, and the GUI framework, the GUI framework is called eGUI. Yes. Uh, next question was, uh, what Vim thingy extension are you using for VS Code? And the answer is the, the built-in one. The the one I think it's official from them. Oh no, VS Code Vim. That's definitely open source. That one. And it is from VS Code Vim. Who's contributing to that? Actually, that's a good question. It's used by a bunch of stuff. We're looking at the bowels of open source now. J Fields. Who is J Fields? Maintainer of VS Code Broadway technology. 
as in the musicals or as in Broadcom? <laughs> okay. Uh, next question from Prowl, I think. Let me know if I got your name right. How's the living on donations thing going for you? It is going well. I've got a couple of corporate sponsors still active for now. Uh, what I'm is, is sponsoring me for the HTTP2 work I was planning on doing on stream. And uh, as for individuals, it's it's what I had before I stopped having a day job. And it's, you know, it's an adjustment. I am glad I have um, money on the side for now. I'm still trying to hit the hit the targets. Uh, BGG says Abdelia is not ready yet, but we are working on it to make it more awesome. Approaching a 0.1.0 release, it almost can be used like an actual screen reader now. Cool. So this is Linux only, I'm assuming. I I don't have time to read all this on stream, but it looks cool. All right, more questions. There's still 51 of you. This is this is a weird stream now. I'm sorry. A question from Parth on YouTube. What does the ideal place of work look like for you? It is my bed and I'm not doing anything. I know, right? Everybody thinks I'm like this driven individual who's like doing a thousand things and all I want to do is just sleep. Uh, but this might be because I got to bed at like 4 a.m. Um, the ideal place of work depends on the individuals. Everyone has different needs. I'm, I'm very happy having this, this kind of space that you can't see because I'm not showing you. Uh, but it is set up nicely. I got a bunch of cameras and lighting and stuff and the desk is cool and it is good for my back if I stand up straight. But I, I suppose you mean like the working environment, right? Like the colleagues and how is it organized and blah, and like how, how does the work get done? What tools they're using? And the answer is, I don't know. I don't know. And it, it only matters if you're in control of those things, right? Because I don't know, I work at a bunch of places and I had ideas about how things should be done and it didn't matter except it made me frustrated because they were not doing it like that. <laughs> so <laughs> it just led to conflict. A uh, question from Fleur on YouTube. Hey, have you already looked at VLang? If yes, what's your thought on it? Uh, my, uh, okay, I had a, a ready-made answer for this, but it's on Mastodon and there's no search because search is evil, apparently. Um, so my thoughts are like, it reminded, oh, actually it was in my emails. There's no way I'm opening my emails on stream. Um, yeah. Uh, feeling your opinion about V. So someone asked me, hey, Amos, I came across your blog post about Go and it resonated with me. I wanted to ask you, have you had a chance to check out V? If so, could you share your opinion about it? <sighs> so I said, hey, a long time ago in another life, I, create a, I created a programming language called OOC. And there it is. It's an object-oriented language with high-level constructs that compiles to C99. I was young and naive and kind of over-promised over on what it could do. Its performance compared very favorably to other languages that were that were popular at the time. Various Ruby implementations, Python, etc. even Go. Once I started getting to Rust, I saw that it provided guarantees something guarantees that languages that compiled to C could never provide. This is not exactly true, but it 
practice it's often the case i got very into memory safety but also sometimes and correctness in general which rust helps more with than any other language i know about this is not true there's i don't know fucking haskell but freaking haskell f in chat for my partner um ships uh, blah, 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 blah. ICV is a repeat performance of OC, but by some other team. They got a lot of extremely negative feedback that I understand, but it's unfortunate that it happened that way. I'm not personally interested in it, but just like I'm not interested in Zig and Odin and Nim, uh, I'm not looking for a better C. I'm looking for a new generation of languages that solve more problems than my C program is a bit verbose. So this is not totally fair. And I got a bunch of responses saying, how dare you? It's not just like C, but with nicer syntax. And I guess it's not. There's a bunch of interesting stuff in all these languages. I just cannot be made to care. I'm not contractually obligated by anyone to care about this. <laughs> and if I did do like a review of V, it would probably be negative. Um, as the, there have been other negative reviews of V before. So I don't think they need me to do one. Uh, and as for the other ones, I like the, I don't know, they're fun. But. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I th I feel like safety is the first thing you want. And then if you get other cool stuff on top of that, then that's good. And if you don't, then whatever. Uh, I thought that meant Vi as the editor. Uh, Parth rephrase uh, their question. If you would ever go back to the industry as an employee, not a founder, what company would it be? I've, I don't know. I do not want to think about being employed again for as long as I can <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, it's complicated, right? Because I don't want to work like, I don't want to work for a company that directly works with the US military, for example. I feel like that's wrong. And so I don't want to work with like cryptocurrency. I feel like it's wrong. It's my point of view. Don't add, I will ban you in chat if you reply to this. I have streamer privileges. I get to say bullshit and you can't reply. Bullshit, I mean, of course. Um, and so like if you're trying to avoid evil, eventually you're going to find a reason not, not to work at any company, like every company that exists. And so it's hard to pick. And so once you've removed all the big ones, you're like, no, I don't want to work for like this big uh, internet company because of the content they protect. And, <laughs> and once you're you're left with like a smaller pool of companies and everyone kind of knows each other, they're like, yeah, we have, I don't know, a, a list of basic things we agree on that are good and that are bad. And, and then from there, you still get the, like, the company's not actually doing evil, but the way the work is organized is suboptimal. And, like, I don't jam with it. And I don't know. It's being able to care about these things and, like, taking them into account when you choose a job is, is you can only do that from a position of extreme privilege. Because there's a lot of people out there trying to just get their first job, right? And they just... They just want any job. They don't mind. They don't. They need money. They need to pay the rent. And I respect that. So, like, when I say that company X sucks, I mean, what's the <laughs> what's the good place equivalent of this word? Uh, company X is wrong, and they don't go work for it. I'm not putting on blast everyone who's working for it. I'm like, they're paying their rent. It's, it's okay. I don't judge them. I judge the, the company should do better, and they should get paid to do better things at the same company. Why not? Um, I don't know. It's... It's complicated. This is not philosophic tube or whatever. This we can't get into it too much. <laughs> but the point is, yeah. Um, I would like a company that. I don't know. There's, there's red flags. Like flex PTO is a red flag. People take less PTO if you have flex PTO. So if you don't have enforced minimum PTO, that's a red flag to me because it's like, oh, you can take vacations whenever. But then whenever you take it, you feel bad because you miss out if it's not organized, like everything's understaffed. And, and so you never take vacation. And that's what the numbers show. So that's a red flag. I don't know. Diversity is a, is a, is a big discussion topic. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, we're trying so hard. But then what are the specifics, though? And like, it's not an afterthought. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about all of this, but yeah, I, I, I think you see where I'm coming from. There's a lot of factors. 
it's pretty hard to decide on like what the criterion should be to go work somewhere or not. Uh, so about the would would the would it be comparable to the reviews you made on Golang? No, it would be different. It would be different. The reason I was so tough on Go is because they have infinite money, right? It's Google. They okay, that's not fair. That there's <laughs> it's not like they have the whole of Google behind them. It's like a team inside a part of Google. But still, they have like, for the purposes of like comparing languages, they have infinite money, right? And they invested in a bunch of ways. And I was tough on Go because on the, on the marketing, on the website, it says like it solves everything and it's so easy. And it's uh, if you just used it, then everything would be fine, which is the exact thing that people grilled Rust community about. They're like, Rust people say that it solves everything and like you can never have bugs anymore if you do, if you write Rust, which is not what anyone has been saying, but it's, you know, it's what people get grilled for. And so I was just mad at like goes in for like, oh, it's, it's, it's easy and high performance and we're embracing simplicity. I'm like, no, you're just ignoring like the 20% of the problem you don't want to think about. And that, okay, that's great for startups. Yeah, I guess <laughs> sometimes. Um, if you would be different, it's like a team of folks just like having fun. Let them have fun. I don't, I don't need to comment on their fun. Like they're having fun. It's cool. I don't want to do it. I've done it once. We had a community of like 50 people on IRC and stuff. Someone write an, an operating system. We wrote a bunch of game engines in it. We had a package manager before. I don't know. Uh, when, it, when, when it was still only Ruby and, and Python that had package managers. Python is, has too many package. I think Python should donate a bunch of package managers to the other languages. It, it's hogging all the, 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 the package systems, uh, which I, I think is unfair. Um, I should just drag the chat window here, right? No, <laughs> it did not like that at all. So I have a multi-display setup, and one of them is 100% DPI, and it's 1080p, and the other one, is the 4K display, um, is at 150%. And so applications just do all sorts of terrible things with it. Cause like some of them are like the main display is 100%. So I'm gonna use 100% all the displays. And there's like very few applications that are actually okay with that. Uh, VS Code is one of them. If I drag it, or does it? Yeah, VS Code does the right thing. Cause it's an Electron app. So I, I famously <laughs> came out in defense of Electron because I was like, stop being mean to Electron. It's just trying to do its best and UI is complicated and stuff. And everyone got angry because everyone always gets angry about Electron because like I have 12,000 copies of Chromium on my poor computer and I can barely start up anymore. First of all, the startup time is not like impacted. It, only if you have <laughs> So that's automatic startup. Uh, but second of all, Stuff is hard. IDPI is hard. Like I, I can drag it and it just works. But this is not the case for a bunch of other applications. Like OBS is QD, C, C++ thingy. And, and look at what happens if I drag the chat window. Does that look good to you? Do you like this? Is this, is this okay? Like this is the, <laughs> this is the hundred percent um, version of the chat window. I can interact with it. And then there's black and then there's white. Why? Because it doesn't do the thing properly. So yeah, <laughs> it looks fine on the other display. And sometimes the application will like irreversibly mess itself up when you drag a window from one uh, display to the other. You can't even see the chat window. Oh, OBS is probably hiding itself. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. I can post a screenshot somewhere. I, I could take a screenshot. No, I can't take <laughs> <laughs> you can't take a screenshot of a window you're hiding on Windows because that's how it works. I can just disable the setting. One sec. Hide OBS window from the screen capture. There. There you go. Now you can see it. You might have to zoom in. But yeah, here's the actual, like, I don't know. It's it's actually a browser in there. So it's QD Web, WebKit something. And then there's a, 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 <laughs> a few different black surfaces and then white and also this weird like smaller than usual close window i don't know it's so yeah 
we have chant here, I guess. Cool. Uh, <laughs> that is just one of the things. Oh, recently when I did my three and a half hour shoot, um, I copied all the footage back and I discovered that my um, my camera in its infinite wisdom cut everything at like a uh, uh, hundred gigabytes. Because when you record 4K 50 FPS, it's at like 150 megabits per second, which is a lot more than I would pick because nobody sees to see my face in that much detail. Also, it's like green screen and then in the corner, just like it is currently, but this is the obvious thing and uh, I have the DaVinci result thing. Nobody cares. Um, so it makes very large files. Or So I had a, a 270 gigabytes worth of footage, which I, I was very happy that I bought a big micro SD card earlier. And so I copied it back and I opened the first file and it's, it says 35 and I'm like, I don't, you know, I'm not the best math guy, but it should be more than 35 minutes, right? If there's three and a half hours of footage and there's only three files and the first two are hundred gigabytes, 35 minutes is not enough. So like, what the heck happened? I've already, I've already lost four hours, 20 of footage the, the day before. What happened? And what happened was, uh, I might actually be able to show it on screen. Let me just, oh yeah, also when you drag and like the application actually adjusts, it, it lags, it lags. Um, let me find it, mine hack three, open this. Do I want to download it? No, so you can see <laughs> part of the window. There we go. You see that? 3515, that's not enough footage at all. And it turns out it's actually an hour and 35, which you can see on the other display that I can't show you. Uh, but yeah, my heart dropped. Cause I was like, imagine doing two half hour, like two half days of shooting and just messing up both of them somehow. Anyway, <laughs> anybody else got questions? The chat just felt dead. I think the, the, the high DPI thing just killed everyone. I get it. I was shocked too, but it's just the world we live in. I, I'm very curious what Linux would do with it. And this, I'm aware that there's no such thing as Linux. First of all, it's, it's GNU Linux, GNU. Uh, it's, sorry, it's, uh, what's her name? Uh, the, the, the singer, she's not real. She's like a hologram. What's her name? Hatsune, it's Hatsune Miku Linux. Um, and second of all, this is like Xorg and like Wayland and nothing works, but at least it's newer. Super glad I'm wearing pants right now. <sighs> and I'm very curious what it would do with the, with the, the display thing. Yeah. Yeah, GNU is dead. Also, it's not pronounced GNU, but I'm just going to keep saying it like that. GNU is dead. Hatsune Miku made uh, Linux. It uh, made GCC and made, uh, sorry, not all, everything but Linux. Sorry, the BSD doesn't count. BSD is co-opted by, by Mac. Uh, oh, actual question. C. Walkertron on Twitch says, I would love to write Rust tooling at work, but I feel like it's rough to foist it on junior people. I'm in IT, not software dev. Any ideas for how to ease into it? Is the issue that like you want them to contribute to the tooling? Like, how, Do they need to write Rust code to use the tooling? But anyway, everybody has the same answers. Like I love Rust and the work won't let me have it because some people hate it. How do I fix it? And the answer is, I don't know. And I think it has to come from above. Like I've, I've been in positions where I try to make Rust happen and it, I don't know, it, it, it needs, it needs to come from the top. Like it needs to, <laughs> at some point, <laughs> it's not everybody is going to fall in love with Rust. Some people are like, just going to hate it. Like, ah, I don't really care for it, but like we have to use it. And so. I just have to learn it and it, it's fine. Just because a, 
overwhelming majority of people who use Rust today kind of like it for what it provides you with. It, not everybody's gonna like it. So, uh, how to ease it in? Provide support. Like, uh, uh, you see articles of startups being like, "Oh, we tried doing a thing in Rust for three months and it didn't work. Like, we didn't make a bunch of progress and people were confused because it's different than like the other languages and blah blah blah." And like, did you pay for training? Did you? provide resources did you have one-on-one -on -one things like did you did you do consulting there's a bunch of different companies that do rust consulting it's not like you're alone it's a bunch of large companies are training hundreds and thousands of people hundreds and thousands not hundreds of thousands well who knows um there's solutions like support your people it's always the same thing right you need you need to provide people support I'm hoping they'll like it, right? But if they if they don't, it's fine too. Um, Froll asks, I am trying to build a Rust tool that lets you query markdown documents in a structured way. Do you know tools that let you do something like that? I know half of it, right? You have pull down CMark, which is what I use. It's not the only markdown parser for Rust, but it's a pretty popular one. It has 300,000 downloads per month. You can do that and that'll give you a stream of events with like start and and so on. So you just need to, <laughs> you just, load bearing just, you just need to convert that into a tree, which conveniently we've, we've seen in the day seven challenge of Advent of Code. Again, if you go on my very over-engineered website, because series Advent of Code 20, 2022, you get day seven here and it talks about trees in Rust. So you can just do that. As for querying it, you're now in like parsing a language territory and you should, I don't, I don't know how you're going to pull that off. You better be careful about the design, but you can use this for like uh, error reporting and you can use num for parsing and then connecting the two is less, is left as an exercise to everyone who's doing it. I recently saw someone who, I think it was Kat, who connected the two, um, or maybe it wasn't, um, and they were like, yeah, it's, I've just been copy pasting because there's no reusable solution to, to connect both of these, which is a shame. So it was cat. Uh, next question, unpronounceable OQ9HWXT8 on Twitch says, I think there is some way in protocol in the works to do the DPI stuff. Yeah, I think there is, um, a Wayland thing in progress for like everything under the sun. Uh, MP Grimm says, I do a ton of mentoring within my company, helping to get people moving with Rust. That is cool. That people need support for everything. For like when they get sick, when they get they they have childcare to do when they move they need i don't know with mental health they need support for everything and for learning new languages there's no exceptions it's no different i started some of the stuff uh, aoc stuff with regexes but it's great to know about them it was a better option yeah regexes are all like almost always the wrong tool for the job right but sometimes you just don't care sometimes you're like the dxkcd thing like i know regular expressions stand back that's what you do because it's like quick and dirty it's like i don't know using bash or whatever you like the background keyboard sound wow okay uh, <laughs> i should make a straw ball for this what keyboard do y'all think i use it's gonna be a fun one it has to be something fancy right I mean, I, my whole life is typing pretty much. So, right? No, wrong. It is. <laughs> you know the answer to this. My keyboard is a Logitech K120. It is the most basic bitch office shirt <laughs> you can find. But it's it's uh, if you buy it again every year or so, it it doesn't lose its uh, its flex, and so it is it is not as noisy as the the few not too expensive mechanical keyboards that I have. I bought some and I had to stop using them because I'm not alone in the neighborhood. So yeah, 
Yeah, membrane keyboards. What's wrong with them? We might as well see where it failed because I forgot where we were. Probably need to do some dependency updates. Okay. Oh, new version of bytes, curl, sin. Well, I should update nightly too. Hey, RD Techie, came here through Primogen, heard you mention you several times. Yeah, so what happened with Primogen is that I saw his, I forget how I learned about his existence, but I saw his content uh, and on YouTube, I checked out the video about JSON versus like binary formats. I think he used, uh, I forget the name. It's, there's a K in there somewhere. Um, and I saw the video and I was like, well, that's not the whole story, then is it, right? Someone could come in and nitpick, but that's very rude. Like, that's not something you do to your friends. You don't come to their video and be like, actually, you can use SIMD to parse JSON, so it's not as bad as you think. Um, also, schemas and stuff, whatever. I had a bunch of thoughts about it, and I thought, you can't do that to a friend, so he has to be my nemesis, right? I have, like, everyone needs a good nemesis, right? It's also, it's my evil arc, whatever. Um, and so I announced it on, on Twitter, uh, RIP Twitter. And I said, I'm thinking of making the Primogen my nemesis. And I mentioned him. And then because we had some interactions in the past where like he, I don't know, he wasn't into Rust yet and I was, and he was, I don't know, we had, we had, we had some words, as you say. Um, <laughs> he reached out private, sorry for the, about the, the mic thing. Uh, he reached out privately, he was like, hey, are we okay? I'm like, yeah, I just thought it would be really funny if we were nemesis. And he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, like, I'm the weirdo, right? Which I am. Um, but then eventually what happened was that I, 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 I uh, went to his stream and chat and hang out, like hung out and he was, I don't know, he was having some lifetime questions and I was like, I'll hop into a call and help you if you want, kind of crashing his stream and he let me join and we had a, a small discussion so now we're friends so the nemesis thing didn't pan out so i'm still uh, on the lookout for a nemesis is the it is, is the short of the story <laughs> thank you i'm i'm pretty happy with this story but you know i have too many friends is the <laughs> is the problem i i really need a good nemesis like but it needs it needs to be someone who doesn't like it has to be a friendly thing it can't be someone who's like actually harmful 
It has to be someone who's just like, we're playing at like, oh, the, the, they did this and now I'm going to do the, the same or better or whatever. Just like uh, the two guys, like YouTube dudes just arguing over if you if you take these little um, this little metal balls or like little ball magnets <laughs> and you just, you just uh, pour them out of a cup thingy then what are the forces and like how come that it actually makes a loop that goes all the way up uh, those dudes like did the back and forth i think it was one of them was um the electric guitar guy um electro boom and then the other one was that bold person um yeah the stand up mass maybe no, 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 it was the other one. It was the other one that has... And they have very different color correction settings on their videos. So it's very shocking to watch one or the other because Extra Boom's videos are all yellow and stuff. And the other one is just like pale as heck. Just like pink. Uh, anyway. Uh, sorry, my mind is not 100% there because the real life situation is still unfolding. I'm not going to give any details, but yeah, I'm keeping an eye on stuff. Uh, but I do need a, a good nemesis. That is true. You thought Go was my nemesis. No, no. I don't know, this is my stream. I can ban people from mentioning Go, you know? I'm not gonna, but I could. I don't wanna talk about Go in my free time. This is over. I got, like I did, three articles about it over two years time. I got threats, people went ape, shape, ape shirt. Whoa, close one. Uh, and it's over. I don't, I don't wanna talk about it anymore. Which technologies are you an expert in? None of them. Nobody, anyone who says they're an expert in Rust is a liar and a thief. Even the people who are making Rust are like, oh yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> so none of them. Does that answer your question? Uh, but also like, I don't know, web stuff and I did a bit of game development stuff and I don't know, like the operating system stuff. Um, Uh, nothing's ever constructed, blah, blah, blah. Okay. If you have more questions, we still have a, a few minutes, I think. At least. I'm actually gonna take a quick break and then I'll check, uh, I'll check out your questions. Oh, you were seeing the BRB screen all that time. And I was doing H2 stuff and nobody told me anything. Anyway, now I'm actually BRB. See you in a bit.
I'm back. Welcome back to me. Uh, Promise your nemesis in terms of your editor. Because of him, I switched over from VS Code to NeoVim. More power to you. I use VS Code because I like the model and there's a bunch of good extensions. Uh, if I could get NeoVim to work reliably for me, I think I would. I actually tried NeoVim again because of uh, Primogen. I, I, I was using Vim in a previous life. But I the, I broke my config so fast, even though like I was doing it carefully, not just copy pasting everything from someone else, that, yeah. I just gave up again. And you have to find your own solution to sync the config and everything. It's a, it's a whole thing. Uh, but yeah, if you if it works for you, then great. That's cool. All right, so I would like uh, whoever is, is reviewing this content that this is alcohol-free beer. I'm going to show it to the camera. It is 0.0%. .0%. I just like the taste. Uh, I know someone that recently did yay dash as paru. What is paru? Oh, this is... <sighs> you can see my search history. I, I, I searched the name of the inventor of the trash can in France. There you go. That is the same thing. Okay, I don't know what Peru is. Uh, I would love to use Helix, but VS Code has too much good extension. Yeah, that's the same thing for me. Hi, Roma. Welcome to the stream. We're both Prime and TJ. I don't know TJ yet. You don't see me because I messed it up. And now you see me. It was awful you were gone and you talked about the background when you got back. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I uh, you know left and right are complicated concepts. Uh, now you see me, so I'm gonna show you again that this is alcohol-free beer. What is the full name of the inventor? The, the, the inventor of the trash can is Alfred Poubelle, and he was um, we can we can look it up. He somewhere in France. He was wow. Wow. Wow, Wikipedia. No, Eugene. <laughs> Eugene Poupel. <laughs> okay, in English, please. And uh, he was a lawyer and a diplomat. This is now a, a Wikipedia stream. Uh, I should log in. Uh -huh. Cool, you can see my me typing my pin. That's fun. There we go. Now we got dark mode. Apologies for your eyes. Uh, Eugene Poubel from 1831 died in 1907. He made waste containers compulsory in Paris. And so his surname became synonymous with waste bins and remains the most common French word for a bin. And that's a trivia question. I was like, uh, was the Poubel named after his inventor? And everyone was like, no fucking way. Nobody's named trash can, right? Eugene trash can, but he is, so. Uh, what did they do with the garbage before that? That is, there's probably a, a reference for that, isn't there? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Needed the system. I think that, yeah, they just threw it out the window. No? And then people just cleaned the streets? I don't know. That's a good question. Probably the ground, yeah. Who cares? It's garbage. Let's throw it out. Uh, so what was I doing? Yeah, okay, so CC is not the latest version. Does that work? Aggressive was not expected. Incompatible? Yeah, 
Any reason why you prefer Windows over other options out here? There's other operating systems? I did not know that. Is it mainly for streaming? Content creation and does VS Code being so good for remote devs also play into that? Yes, it is that. Also games. I used to like games. And then I worked in the video game industry for a while. And then I recovered because I stopped liking to play games because it just was too much like i don't know you learn about the working conditions and you have to test games all day for your job um and now i'm starting to enjoy games again by conniving with the enemy and i have um a steam deck which is very good and it's like not the computer like the the whole point was to have something that's not the computer otherwise i'm not the computer doing self-promotion and writing articles and creating videos and answering your questions on, on twitch.tv and youtube um so I like the idea that it's just, I can be somewhere else. I can be in bed, I can be on the couch. And I have this thing that's definitely not a computer in a handheld. It's definitely not the modern version of the GP32X or something um, that plays games on Linux. And it actually works kind of great. So props for that. Uh, the guillotine is named after Dr. Guillotin. I, that sounds wrong but also believable but yeah if the opera i didn't actually seriously answer the, the the question so yeah video content davinci resolve exists on linux but it doesn't have for a reason that just escapes me it does you can't import audio that's like mp3 even vorbit i don't get it they just nixed all the audio decoders so like MP3, I get it, right? There's 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 royalties you have to pay if you ship an MP3 decoder. And on Windows, it's just built into Windows or something, so they pay for it, so it's fine. And on Linux, you can just break the law or whatever. Or if you're in Europe, it's fine. I don't I, I haven't kept up on the royalties thing. And you can install like GStreamer ugly plugins or whatever, or bad plugins, and it's fine and it works, but it doesn't use GStreamer, it uses its own thing. And so they just don't ship any decoders. So I don't know how anyone does anything on, on DaVinci Resolve on Linux, which is weird because like they ported the whole thing. Also, it was weird with like high DPI and like the, the, the usual Linux stuff. It's like my the sound doesn't work, the display doesn't work. Also, I have this um, this camera here is a DCGH5 uh, from Panasonic. Um, and it pl it plugs it has clean HDMI output and it, it plugs into um, a PCI Express capture card and there's no Linux drivers official ones for that there's an an official one but you're like I bought this with my money I don't want to run someone's weekend project of a driver on it uh, you know, if it's just software it's fine if it's drivers I'm like eh, I could put it in a situation that I don't know how to undo so. Uh, General Knight asks, do we expect Amos's live stream to be as long as his articles? No. I am streaming as a distraction right now because uh, I need a distraction. And I'm going to stop as soon as uh, I want to. So enjoy it while it lasts. Matt kind of missed the boat on gaming and multimedia. Uh, yeah. So much has been written about that. I don't. Yeah. Okay. YouTube stream discoverability is so trash. Didn't know you were live until I wanted to check if you posted a new video. Well, you checked at the right time, Jonathan. What can I say? Uh, I should just like write one line of code just so we can say it, it was actually a coding stream. What do you think? I think YouTube like probably sent a bunch of notifications the first time around. I don't know if it matters that I'm streaming through Restream.io. I don't know. All right. Can't run the test suite with Cargo Test. So I've already, like, I've been uh, advertising uh, Next Test pretty heavily for Rust. If you have Rust Test to, apparently can't talk and type at the same time. If you have tests to run, Cargo Next Test is great. It's by Rain. It's very good, I like it a bunch, and this is what it looks like. And you can see one of them is failing. This is the one I was supposed to fix on stream. And one of the big differences between Cargo Test and Cargo Next Test is that Cargo Next Test runs every test in a separate process. So uh, that means you can do stuff like, uh, let's look at this one. 
like helpers run, this does setup tracing, right? And then this does registry in it. And so that sets a global. And if you're using cargo test, because it does multi-threading, it's all in the same process. It's a single global for every test. So you're setting the, the tracing subscriber global subscriber several times in the same process. And that's very bad. And that's, that's what we saw up here. So if I just do cargo test, it doesn't work. It's like, oh, the global dispatcher has already been set. And so it, it's not happy. But cargo next test does a separate process per test. And so it's not the best solution for this or whatever, but it makes my life much easier. Can you fix it with just one line? I don't believe so. I, I, I need to remind myself of what I was doing. And so we're just gonna very, I'm actually gonna zoom out VS Code, I apologize. The UI is gonna be too small to read on screen and then I'm gonna zoom in the text. And so we're gonna lose less space to like the Chrome of the editor, no pun intended. So not yet implemented call server driver with a request, blah. I think I did like the groundwork for this. So there's this serve function here in H2. So we're supposed to serve HTTP2 and it's pretty naive. It does a transport, it has an HPAC decoder. This is good actually. It parses a uh, preface, which is what we want. The, pre the HTTP2 preface is just this. It's like pre, I always read it as like priority, but I don't know where it comes from. Um, star HTTP2 uh, slash 2.0 and then SM, which doesn't mean anything. Um, and then a bunch of like CR lib. It parses the pre uh, the preface and then it parses frames and then depending on what the frame is, it does different things. And if it's padded, it just bails. <laughs> it's just it's a naive implementation. Um, oh, just to answer quickly, um, Milo Moisson. I have not done day eight of AOC. I did a poll and the slight majority voted for not doing AOC on stream because it, it is the day off. And so a bunch of people haven't gotten to it yet. So it would be a spoil. Um, and then wouldn't something like one set or lazy static work for the tracing? Yes, but also no, because you also want the tracing output to go like to the test framework instead of the standard output. If, it, if it's multi-threaded, it's weird because like then the test output gets mixed up. It's tracing and test is weird. There's a bunch of crates. They're all kind of wonky. Yeah. Uh, have you messed with ChatGPT yet on stream? Not on stream, uh, but I have messed with it. And I think it's pretty fun. And there's ethical considerations and blah. It's just, it's, it's, everything's gray in 2022. But yeah, I've had a bunch of fun with it uh, off stream. Uh, so what does it do? Headers, so we're getting headers. So with H2, <clears throat> uh, I would usually use something like uh, Wireshark for this, but I do not want to use Wireshark on stream unless I have of, uh, yeah, unless I have a, a, a segregated network interface, like I do have in this VM. So I, I guess I just can't be bothered to do it. So we are parsing frames. And I think the first one we get is like settings or something. Actually, we're probably, yeah, we are. Cool. So I'm just going to have clear cargo next slash run. And we're going to read all the output. And we only want to run H2 basic and also no capture. Cool. Very good. There's a bunch of warnings, uh, which we don't care about. So it's accepting the connection. I'm assuming this is just sending the preface. Uh, the 23 bytes sounds like the preface we saw earlier. And it's parsing. This is just noise, honestly. Reading plus parsing, incomplete request. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this should be trace, not debug. Parsing errors can be, can be debug. Uh huh. Uh, 
Okay, now it's just showing trace. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. There we go. So it's receiving a settings frame. And just acknowledging them, so I think it's it's like acting them. You send uh, another setting screen back, and you set the act bit, and it's fine. There's uh, this is all, by the way, uh, background for this. Uh, everyone always jokes that like I have an article for everything, and it, in this case, it's true. If you go to my website and you scroll a little, you'll see the HTTP crash course nobody asked for, and then you get a bunch of stuff about like TLS and proxying, HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2, and so. This is what you need to, and the difference between what we did in the article and what we're doing now in hring is that hring is on top of IOU ring. So you get different um, IO types. So if we look at the helper here, read and parse, uh, you can see that it's odd. It also has like this custom buffer thingy. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually type the, the repository so you can go look at what it is. This is what I'm actually working on right now. Um, where can we see a read call? Oh, it's called on the buffer itself. Yeah. Okay. I don't really want to explain the buffering strategy, especially because it's going to change because now IOU ring has a uh, provided buffers like P buffers or picked buffers. I forget uh, what it's actually, what it actually means. But you just give it like a pool of buffers. Is it maybe pool buffers? Who knows? Um, and then it picks like whichever one it wants and it tells you, oh, I took this buffer and put some data in it. And you're like, great. And then you put the buffer back when you're done with it, you put it back into the, the pool by like, again, writing it to a ring, just like you do. I, I, this, I, there should be like another two hour stream just explaining what your, your, your ring does. But basically you put requests in a ring and then it puts responses in a ring and then you almost never have to do any actual syscalls. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> anyway, it d doesn't really matter here because like all the, the bits of IOU ring are actually um, abstracted away and we only need to uh, care about H2 semantics. So it's decoding stuff. So, okay, so we're getting a settings uh, thing and then a window update thing and we're ignoring it, which is very bad and we shouldn't do. Uh, it does act like a log-free data structure, except it's not really log. -free. There's like barriers and stuff. I don't know the actual implementation details. Um, there's a there's a good document about it. Like, the, what is IOU ring and how does it actually work? Uh, there's a PDF. Yeah, oh, Unix isn't. Is that the one? Maybe. Lord of the IOU ring. Yeah, that's a kind of good reference, I think. Uh, but it says just use the viewing, which is, yeah. Um, anyway. Just Checking something. Uh, and then we get a headers frame, and that's actually the request coming from curl. So I guess we should look at what the test actually does that we're trying to to fix. And I think it's like H2 basic. And in there we have uh, setting up IR, and then the client is just, so we're using curl. Why curl? Because curl does everything. Curl is the universal. Curl is in my camera that you're looking at right now. I tooted about it. There's a curl license. If you go to that, it, curl is everywhere. There's a, there's a neat website by the author of curl whose name is, I forget what it, what the curl author, so big, Daniel Stenberg, Dan, and he has like a hall of fame. Is it he? Who knows? 
whatever. Uh, they, okay. Let's, let's go with they, when you don't know. Just use they. Uh, Daniel has a Hall of Fame somewhere. No, I'm never gonna find it that way. <laughs> okay, if someone has a link to it, please post it because I'm not gonna find it. Curl is everywhere. No, that's just a talk. Ugh. Uh, Jonathan says, I'm doing AOC in C this year because last year I did it in Rust and now more than ever I remember why we need languages like Rust. I mean, yeah. If you're comfortable with Rust, you don't need AOC to like learn more Rust. And if you do it in C, you remember. <laughs> it's a good reminder of what you get with Rust. Uh, so it is using curl. Is it the, the easy end of the interface? It's from the uh, the curl crate, which is kind of a higher level abstraction over curl sys. It's how it always works in Rust. There's a, there's a sys crate and there's a trans crate. No, that was it. <laughs> now, there's a sys crate a system that it binds directly and is all in safe functions. And it's usually generated with a bind gen. It, it maps one one with the C API or C, C++. And then there's a, there's a higher level kind of safer crate. Uh, I don't even know if there's any unsafe functions in there. I don't think you can look up unsafe functions. But yeah, so we're using the easy um, interface here. And yeah, they're all safe. Cool. And we're making a new, ver uh, a new request with uh, v2 prior knowledge. Why prior knowledge? Because the code in HRing does not care about TLS. It does not care about uh, uh, ALPN, which is application level protocol negotiation. It only cares about H2. And so we are just straight up talking H2 without doing a TLS handshake and saying, yes, the, of the protocols I want to speak, there's H1 and H2, and you can pick, and they're like, oh, let's do H2. It's the modern thing, and then you do it. Uh, this one just directly does uh, H2. And it's also not over TLS, it's just like, uh, which is called H2C. When you're do, doing HTTP2 over plain text, it's just called H2C. Um, and it does a request to this, and there's a body, blah, blah, blah. Um, and yeah, and so the, 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 the interfaces are weird because of async function and traits, which this code base is using. So there's this, um, and this is the crux of why the test is not, um, is not passing actually. It is because we are parsing all of this and we can see in the test, so we're getting a headers frame, which is actually the request. So we see that the method is post, the path is eco body, the scheme is HTTP, which is weird, but fine. Uh, authority is just whatever address the test server bound uh, to accept, uh, accept, accepts everything. Content type is octet stream, because we're just posting a body and we're not specifying the content type. So it's just picking the, the defaults, just binary data. And then the, the, the content we're posting is 23 bytes. So yeah. And uh, we're ignoring most of the pseudo headers, actually. Uh -huh. And then the actual other headers that are not pseudo headers that are accept content type, content length. Um, yeah. And so we are supposed to call server driver and we don't. And do we, act do we even have a server driver here? I don't think we do. So we should look at how H1 does it, because H1 already works. So we have the config here, and in the config, no, it's not in the config, it's transport driver. So we should take a driver. But I don't remember if server driver is already like abstracted over H1 and H2. I think it is. Yes, it is. Cool. And then responder. Yeah, has this encoder thing. And then we have an encoder for like H1. If we look at the implementations. It's starting to look a lot like Hyper and, and Christmas, but mostly Hyper. 
as an H1 encoder and it knows how to write responses and body chunks and, and, and all that. So I guess we should just do the same thing for H2. So I've already done, yeah, the, the hard part of the work, which was making the um, this driver interface work with H1 and H2, so like making it generic in, in all the right ways. So now we have a driver and just call handle, just like that. Oh, there's a bunch of to-dos in there. This is the one we want. So driver handle, um, mm -hmm. except we can't really, it's awaiting here. We can't await here. Must do that in a task because we might be getting other frames for other requests. So I wonder how that's gonna work. Should we take an arc driver? Maybe we should. Uh, we can try and get it to block for now. To do, don't block. There, easy peasy. Who says we can't cut corners with Rust? Handle request and respond. Responsitor encoder is going to be an H2 encoder, and I guess it's not going to take a transport because in H1 it's real easy when you're when you're actually encoding stuff. You're just writing stuff directly into the transport, but for H2 it's like oh no, you're sending frames. So like we need a way to send frames and there's a connection state thing here with the streams and I don't know how I thought this would work, but we need an H2 encoder thingy. So here we're gonna make a mod encoder. I think they're doing this on stream is a mistake because I need to be able to focus. <laughs> uh, the chat is being silent and it's too distracting. So you better type it. No, it's, I'm just, I'm just joshing. So we don't really know. We don't have write own. We don't even have a transport. We should have something like, what do we need? The uh, right response, right body chunk, right body and right targets. So. Mm hmm stream state, Rx stage. Uh-huh, that's fine. But then, hey Paolo, yes, the project is moving forward by itself through no effort of my own. But nice to see you here. I noticed you watched the GitHub repository. Uh, no AOC spoilers in chat for day eight, or any days, I guess, please. Because we're not doing it uh, on stream, so.
I was muted all this time. You didn't miss much. Uh, this is not the right way to design this, but it's gonna get the test working. So we're just gonna do that. So I think this should take a stream ID. And then it should take a TX, which is like, yes, but not result. This is from Tokyo and it should take a frame. I forgot how we do frames. We do frames without the payload. So if we want a payload, we should pass it separately. And then right has this without payload. Okay, so if we want payload, we should just write it after. And then set the length. Yeah, okay, cool. So this is like sending frame and then maybe a payload. Cool. That is very inefficient. Where is the second chat? YouTube. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, I don't know if people can actually watch from Restream and get the two chat messages. I have no idea how it works. Anyway. So we have this transmit thing here, and now we should implement it. Let's just go from the like bottom bottom up. So encoder is an interface from here for H2 encoder. It's not generic. I wonder what uh, Rustalizer is gonna do because we have actual async FN in traits, but I'm hoping it just works. Yeah, it's fine. Let's just import a bunch of things. Oh. So body write mode is not a thing for H2. And there's a to do here. So yeah, nice. Um, so we'll just duplicate the to do. Is not relevant for H2. And then traders, I forget how traders work actually. Let me, uh, wait, uh, I've done all this and we still don't have an RFC open. That is a big mistake. You have to share both chats on stream, but it's not very ergonomic. I mean, again, I can drag this here, but <laughs> it's not a very good experience. I can pop out the chat from Restream and put it somewhere. Uh, chat, chat, no. Embed, chat, no. I don't know how to do it. It's fine. Split chat. It's, it's you know, for those who are nostal nostalgic about the IRC era, where there would be net splits, this is ex exactly how it was. What even am I building? Uh, it's a secret. It's a surprise. It's an HTTP 1 and 2 implementation on top of IO Uring on Linux. It's a research project. So it's, it's HTTP stuff, like low level. Uh, stream to Facebook, great audience there too. I don't do Facebook at all, but I can see how that would be smart. I'm just not smart. So traders, what do they do? Trader fields are carried in a field block that also terminates the stream. That is, trader fields comprise a sequence starting with a headers frame followed by zero or more continuation frames where the headers frame spurs an end stream flag. Traders must not include pseudo header fields. So you send data frames and then you just send more header frames. But yeah, th that makes sense. Uh, but I'm guessing at some point you need to. Ah. 
what's not great is that with the current interface we have, we don't know if it's right body chunk is the last body chunk. So we're going to need to wait until right body end to actually send a, an empty data frame. That was second degree. Ah, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know who still hangs out on Facebook, honestly. I have no idea. You like, like our parents generation isn't even on there anymore. Uh, so to the right trainers, I don't care about trainers for now. Um, body right node is not relevant, but that's fine. Body chunk. We get a piece. And then, yeah. Uh, okay, so that should not be like a vector. It should be a piece. Yes. Uh, what is a piece? A piece is either of a uh, static uh, byte slice, a vector, a role, which is a custom buffer type that is from a big um, pool of slices of a big M map memory, and uh, or header name, which is from the HTTP crate, which is also used by Hyper. So I'm trying to reuse what I can without giving up on the efficiency of using IRU ring for this. Uh, okay, so he I here I think we have to make a header frame. Mm -hmm. Frame type is going to be header. Oh, and then there are the flags, I guess. Uh, what kind of flags do we need? Uh, n headers, but not n stream. I actually forget if I actually already sent some frames. No. Okay, I forget how bit flags work with this crate. From. And headers into and the second one is stream ID, which is self stream ID. Uh, all right, seems like that did work. Uh, and I'm doing this in the wrong function. Cool, so now we got this frame and in there we want to encode. Ah, we need the encoder. Oh, okay. We need a reference to the HPAC encoder. Okay, 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 okay. Can you show some roadmap on how to get started into developing networking protocols in Rust? Um, no. But thanks for asking. I just that's kind of a vague question. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So we have the decoder here, but we're not making an encoder, are we? No. So we should make an encoder. And I think it's the thing is that it's stateful. Uh, uh huh. So actually, yeah, this is the wrong abstraction on so many levels. <laughs> um. So it's like headers like this, and then body chunk piece. Uh, and then we're actually going to send events. And we're going to do this elsewhere. Uh, but the events should have... Ugh. A 
a stream ID. This is not a non struct. It's a stir cut. Headers response. Yes. Okay. Oh, actually, we can send like end stream if we know that the body is empty. But that's an optimization. Can't stay because I've, I haven't finished day eight yet. So thank you so much for all your shared knowledge. I must have been learned so much from all the stuff you put out. All the best. Thank you, Halfray from YouTube. Twitch people don't see that, so they think I'm making it up. But no, <laughs> it's just from the YouTube chat. Thank you so much, and good luck with the day eight puzzles. I, I, I haven't looked at it yet, so I'll get to it when I get to it. So we get headers and body chunk. And the body end, I guess. Okay, so now the encoder is just sending events over to the uh, other end. And now we actually need to read from that sender thingy. So the channel is going to be of type h2 event, which apparently we can't import from here because this needs to be pub crate. Uh, there's actually a quick fix for that, yes. Don't know. No, it's unnecessary. Why would you even <laughs> suggest it? <laughs> Come on, Rust Lizer, you're better than this. And then we don't need this. And then the problem is in that loop, we're trying to read and parse, and this blocks. Like you await it, but we also need to be doing some other things, like reading from that TX right here. Now we can import it. And so. Ah, uh, hmm. What do we do with that client buff? Oh, we're reading data. Okay. Comment does not implement debug. Well, it could. 
Let's make it. No. Response does not implement debug. Uh, okay. Just do it by hand then. Mm -hmm. Without the fields. This finish uh, incomplete. I could have sworn. Oh, for tuple, maybe it's not incomplete. But for structs, does it, uh, when you do debug striking, the finishing complete, so it finishes with like dot dot, and then you, you see in the debug uh, formatting that it's not actually, like you're emitting some fields. And there's crates that like let you derive but ignore some fields, but I don't want to pull them in, so I'm just not using it. Mute block not be sent because it's in peace. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, no, okay, I see what's happening. Uh, we don't actually want it. Uh, okay, then I'll keep the debug implementations. But what's happening here is that you can't send the thing. So like, and when you can't send the thing, when you can't send a thing to a um, MPSC channel, it sends the message back, and so that's why it's trying to format the thing as debug. Not send event to connection handler. Or something yeah okay um, and now I'm starting to see how one H2 client could hold up, like a slow writer or a slow reader could hold up all the others. Like if you make a bunch of concurrent H2 requests and one of them has a large body, so it's just streaming data frames, right? And you get a big data frame. And the code that's making that request is just stuck for some reason and it's not actually reading from it then because you have a single actual underlying TCP connection, you're just stuck. And then if you buffer those so that they can be read later, then there's other problems like uh, resource utilization just goes up. So both options are bad. <laughs> and again, I just want to get the test running so we have something and then we can think about how to make it better, which is a good strategy for life. Uh, so let's see. So at this point, we're going to be stuck in this loop trying to read a frame and it's never going to arrive. And we want to be running that in parallel with something else. The client buff is here. Ideally, we would run all of this in a task uh switch to event and then i don't know what we're going to put in there but like ftx frx it's going to be full of channels up in here yes i don't know buffer whatever and then there's going to be like io task uh, talk about U ring, spawn, async move, and then all of that. So yeah, the architecture is going to look a lot like Tokyo. We're naturally arriving at the same conclusions, which is neat. Okay. Oh, and it should have like a copy of the TX, a clone rather. Yes. And that's it. So that's the IO task and we're spawning it. So it, it should run. And then we have like the message task, event task. What was it called? Oh, we have two things called H2 event. Crap, H2 connection event. Mm -hmm. And then rain. Mm-hmm, very good. 
Uh, event task is. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of, of plumbing here that's not strictly needed, but actually not needed at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, the module is supposed to be called encode. Uh, neat thing, you rename the file here, it actually renames the module. Rustnizer wants to make refactoring changes with this file move, and it does, and it works, and it's wonderful. And we want connection event. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so the sender uh, that we have in encoder, where is it? It's here. Is actually an H2 connection event. Yeah. This is very frustrating because it's not <laughs> like it's just deep in the weeds of like types and stuff, and then magically it's gonna work, and I'm gonna be like, well, that's it. Peace out. We did it. Um, but for now, it's just mostly trying to connect stuff. Okay, so we have these. We can send stuff from here. Do we even need, yeah, we need FTX here. So we're reading a frame and then w when we get a frame, oh, how do we know if we have stuff to read from there? From here, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that gives us a roll. So now this is the part we want to do from outside, uh, outside the IO task. So we get this, we read the payload, and then we send something. Ah, oh, and the task is fallible. Okay. So we send the frame, and the frame is... But we're destructuring the frame, so we can't do that. Ah, this isn't great. It could be like this, and we know that the client side streams and the server side streams. So, like, this could be like client event and server event. So we are the server, so this is a server stream event. Like the client initiated stream would be for incoming requests. So that makes sense. So like that's a server event. And then we have client events. And so in headers, here it's a client event because we're reading from the connection with the client. Is frame type copy? It better be. It's not. Could it be? Yeah. Biz flags are copy, so that's fine. Uh, so we just send frame and payload. Uh, 
and payload is um, oh, okay. Ah, but the stream ID is already in the frame. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, this is this is mostly what coding in Rust is. It's just like figuring out the right types. I just wish I could focus better, but apparently I can't. No. Okay, because these aren't actual frames. We're building the frames later. Cool. So we actually want client frame. Now we're just the frame and the payload. I think that's it. And then payload is a is a roll instead of a piece. Uh, but I think we can into that, right? Piece uh, can be a roll. It's from <laughs> piece is, is declared in a in a module called buffet because. Roll, dinner rolls. I don't know. It's a very hungry project. Uh, and so, yes, we can definitely just into that. Good. And then all of this should actually be in the other task. All the decoding, the calling the driver. should be done before okay so let's mm. okay, I just want to paste this somewhere because it's in my clipboard there it is F task equals Tokyo earring spawn then the async move goes in there and then here we clone the FTX. Oh, we don't need to clone it. We just move out of it. And then while let's sum event from event RX. I am going to want to refactor this, but not today. Await. Very cool. We match what the kind of event it is. No, I guess the off. Oh, no, we're gonna need to. We need to separate the the read end and the write end, which is fine because we have like. A thing. Do I have a split implementation somewhere? No. Oh wait, no. All the methods only take ampersand self. So we don't need to split it. We can just like arc it. Yes. Oh, it's already RC'd. This is great. This is super great. So we can just clone the transport here. And then we're also going to want it here because we're going to also do IO and the F task thing, I suppose. Uh, and uh, this is unnecessary because we just move it. Hello, Hojat. Did I get your name right? Uh, decode with callback, paid. Okay, so if we get a server event, what is that again? H2 event. Is this a long form video? Ah, uh, this probably is not going to end up on YouTube. This is kind of a chaotic stream. I did, there was a bit of uh, Q&A going on earlier. 
So server events is something we send to do. Send server event. Thank you. Pronounced it perfectly. And server event does not increment debug. They got us both times. Uh, but if it's a client frame, we get frame and payload. And then we do something with it. And I guess we match the frame type once again. And if it's frame type headers, it should probably be structured better. Okay. Ah, now we can decode stuff with HPack. And we get a request, and we call the driver. Very good. Things are taking shape with way too much nesting. Uh, also, we should join both tasks. So I think that's so cute. Try join. I do task, I have task. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're never going to, you know, they're never going to return, but. Hey, Marina, not pronouncing your last name. How are you doing today? <laughs> uh, headers. Do we somehow declare headers? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. Responder is missing state. And state is response state. And response state is uh, expect response headers. That is the initial state. They're already using type states in here. It's very fancy. H2 encoder imported. Missing the stream ID. I forget how we know what the stream ID. I think it's in the frame. And then TX is FTX clone. Yes, 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 yes. It's all coming together. The request buddy, there's none right now. See you later, Roma. Thanks for joining. It's been two hours. I should honestly stop, but I just want to see if we can get this, uh, this test to pass. And respond, respond is rest handle. Where is a call responder? And I'm going to fix the H1 server. Yeah, it used to be called response handle, and I don't know, responder just sounded better. Uh, what does the H1 server actually do with the request body? It does H1 body. Sure. Guess we're going to need an H2 body. And the H2 body is going to have a receiver. Hmm, let's see. Hmm. Yeah. So it's not going to be generic. And it's going to it's going to be receiving trunks. And then I have an optional content length. Receiver of peace. And then 
what have we got? So this is just self content length. Oh, it doesn't implement debug. I wonder what debug is gonna print for Rx, like it's just a receiver. Uh, EOF is just gonna be, I can have an EOF. And next chunk is async, and that's just gonna be, oh, and body chunk, what is body chunk? It's chunk piece or done. So self rx receive a weight. That's gonna be an option, right? Okay, so we match this. And either we get something. Uh, we can use that. And then we return chunk, and that's a piece, actually. Or it's none, and we return done. And traders are none. Or, yeah. To do, handle the traders. Very good. All right, this is, this is like to-do stuff, but at least it gives us a body, so we just in h2 server, make it a request body. Ah, uh, that shouldn't be pop crate, but whatever. That's not right. I just want to see the, the test go a little a little a little further uh, before returning done we want to set eof to true i guess if it's eof we send done um maybe we could panic here i forget what the h1 buddy does uh, the interface is not ideal, but like next chuck. Um, I don't know. It's just, it just returns done and none. So if you if you miss the traders the first time, you don't get a second chance to get them. All right, I'm gonna be back in five.
All right, I need to take uh, go take care of a friend, so I'm gonna cut the stream here. Thank you so much for attending. Sorry we didn't get the uh, the test working. I'm gonna commit my work in progress, so it's not lost. And I'll see you all next time. It was nice to get uh, back in the swing swing of things, but yeah, there's a situation I gotta take care of. So I'm gonna bail. Thank you so much for joining. Take care, everyone. Uh, support me on Patreon and GitHub sponsors if you can. It helps a bunch. It is my main source of revenue now. And I don't have time for all this self-promotion. So just do it in chat for me. Thank you so much. Bye. Uh, sorry it was short if you just joined. <laughs> Take care, y'all.